Good evening, everybody. Uh, this is uh, to write a summary or to explain a summary about this chapter, chapter three, uh, electromechanical energy conversion. Uh, the method used to analyze uh, the electromechanical energy conversion devices in this chapter is based on the uh, uh, principle of conservation of energy, which states that the energy cannot be created, uh, cannot be created, uh, is neither created from nothing uh, nor can be destroyed. Uh, so this concept has been used to analyze so many different uh, energy conversion processes, uh, like, for instance, uh, turbines, uh, generators, uh, DC motors, AC motors, and so on. So we have the following important equation for this chapter. If we have the electrical energy, it can be translated to be mechanical energy by motor or actuators plus field energy because we cannot create mechanical energy without the without existence of field energy as we will explain later plus energy losses so the electrical energy that has been invested in this mechanical device will produce mechanical energy and some of it will be uh, stored as field energy, and the other form of energy will be uh, dissipated as energy losses, heat energy, core losses, and cover losses. For example, if we have a conductor placed in a magnetic field, this conductor will not experience a mechanical force until a current will flow in it. So the current will flow in the conductor itself will not be enough to create mechanical power, but it should be placed in a magnetic field. And this is what we have, the field energy. And this is what we are meaning or focusing on the field energy. On the other hand, the voltage will be induced in the conductor if it is moved in a magnetic field. The voltage will be induced in the conductor if it is moved by linear motion in a magnetic field. So the magnetic field will exist in both, in, uh, trans in, in uh, conversion from electrical energy to mechanical energy and vice versa. As a functional flux diagram then, here we will have electrical system and then we have coupling field, coupling field, and then we will have mechanical mechanical system that is physically translated to be torque and speed and this is phys physically can be translated to be voltage and current but the coupling field exists in either direction in both direction in transferring from electrical energy to mechanical energy and vice versa mathematically speaking the motional voltage E equals B flux density L length of the air gap or length of the conductor the length of the conductor multiplied by V speed or velocity of the conductor on the other hand Lorentz force equals flux density multiplied by the length of the conductor multiplied by the current carried by this conductor so if you, you can obviously see here, the coupling field must exist in both equations in transferring from electrical energy to mechanical energy and vice versa. Here we will analyze the field energy. Mathematically speaking, the change in electrical energy will be translated to be mechanical change in the mechanical energy and change in the field energy stored. So consider with me this electromechanical system.
this movable part and this is immovable part or fixed part. This is the fixed part and this is the movable part. Suppose we held this constant and we increase the current gradually from this electrical uh, source. So what we have here, most of the power or electrical energy created in this system will be dissipated as field energy because we didn't move this or we intended to uh, held this movable part so that we will prevent it from moving so that most of the electrical energy is dissipated as field energy. The voltage induced equals N d phi by dt or d lambda by dt. Lambda which is the flux linkage. It has been named as flux linkage because it links the mechanical system to the electrical system. On the other hand, the electrical energy equals I dot E, E dot I, dt. If we substitute this equation here, we will have the electrical energy will be dissipated as field energy because the system has been prevented from moving. And then the field energy will, be, will equal I dot d lambda over dt dot dt and equals i dot d lambda. Then wf, which is the total field energy, will be the integration of this equation from zero to lambda. Graphically speaking, it is the area under the curve i and lambda it is the area shaded in blue this is the field energy of the system the other important point that I, uh, with, uh, all of you should know is the form of uh, calculation of the field energy. Some of the field energy will be dissipated in the core and some of it will be dissipated in the air gap. So which, uh, uh, each one of them has its certain formula. Uh, please don't forget to follow the mathematical proof that we have uh, uh, pointed out during our lecture and uh, it has been uh, also reported in the textbook that led to the following formulas to calculate the energy and field energy. This is the field energy in the air gap over 2 mu 0 Vg. This is the volume of the air gap, this is the flux density, and this is the permeability of the system. And the field energy dissipated in the core equals integration of Hc dB dot volume of the core. Dot volume of the core. Because here is the relationship between uh, flux density and magnetic field intensity is linear in the air gap, so uh, we have more simplified relationship or formula to calculate the field energy in the air gap. But here in cast steel, for example, or for any other ferromagnetic material, the relationship between magnetic field intensity and flux density is nonlinear. That led to this uh, complex formula or integral equation. Also, we studied the energy and co-energy. The co-energy has no physical interpretation, except in some times we need it to calculate the mechanical force associated with the system. So it is the dual form of energy, but it has no physical quantity or physical interpretation, except it is used to calculate the mechanical force of the system. Suppose that this characteristic represents the relationship between I and lambda in this mechanical system. And this mechanical system tends to move in this direction, so that the air gap will be uh, narrowed, Then, 
this really can be represented that this curve will tend to be more or highly nonlinear in this direction. This can be translated to be an decrease in the field energy from this point to this point. The decrease in the field energy can be translated as increase, as an increase in the co-energy. So this is the co-energy. And this is the energy of the system. If you follow the mathematical proof that we uh, deduced in the lecture and uh, also exists in the also reported in the book, we, you will find that the mechanical force of the system can be calculated by the field energy or co-energy WF dash with respect to X, X and I at I constant. While the same mechanical force can be calculated by the field energy as function of the distance or the displacement and the current I at lambda equals constant. This is based on the fact that the field energy equals integration from zero to lambda, I dot D lambda, for I as a function of lambda, and this is the relationship or the integral equation for the field energy, lambda dot di. In either way, you can calculate the mechanical force associated with the system. Either you have the current as a function of the flux linkage, or you have the flux linkage as a function of the current. Here we have the energy and field energy, uh, the field energy and the field co-energy. Uh, you can calculate the mechanical force by the partial derivative of the field energy or the field co-energy with respect to the displacement. The field energy, you can uh, find it if you have the current as a function of flux linkage, or on the other hand, you can find the co-energy if you have lambda as a function of i or the flux link as, func as a function of the current according to your de definition to this mathematical function. Finally, we will have the following tips uh, for studying this chapter. As this chapter is more complex to our students, uh, I have the following advices for you to study this chapter and the whole uh, course of the machine. First of all, you should investigate the note and book side by side. Don't leave any uh, other thing that we have explained or uh, emphasized on during our lectures. So uh, please, uh, you can study the note and book side by side. Study the examples, solve them, and you can uh, see the solution of the examples. You are allowed to see the solution of the examples. Then, thirdly, use your own background that you gain it from studying the note and book and solving the examples in order to solve the drill problems that I have given to you in the lecture and don't look at the solution manual uh, uh, prepare your solution and write down your solution then attempt uh, your solution in uh, differently then look at the solution manual to see the differences between your own solution and the solution reported in the solution manual. Otherwise, you can come to my office to uh, explain to you and uh, give you the model answer or solution of the drill problem if you don't have the solution manual of the book. At the final stage, when you complete uh, the, uh, the studying of this chapter, you can go and uh, click on the, vi uh, the video lecture or th this summary uh, video. I would like to thank you for your attention and I wish you every success, inshallah.